Romans chapter 8 and verse number 26. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our, inf in our weakness, in the King James, I think it's infirmity, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans and word that words cannot express. And He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Intercedes for the saints. Saints Alive, that's my title of this sermon today. Saints Alive. A pastor came to visit the other day, this writer writes, and he, and he said that at my advanced age, I should be thinking about the hereafter. And I said, oh, I do that all the time. No matter where I am, in the living room, upstairs, in the kitchen, down the basement, I'm always asking myself, now what am I here after? <laughs> and I have that experience myself a good bit. So we're talking about saints today. Intercedes for the saints. So the question is, who are the saints? What is a saint? What is it that makes someone a saint? In a secular way of looking at it, a saint is a holy or godly person. Well, that means different things to different people. Some people in Waco, Texas, thought that David Koresh was a saint. Didn't work out too well. Maybe he thought he was a saint. I think he did, but it didn't work out too well for them. But he was an evil man. People thought Jim Jones was a saint. How'd that work out? Another secular uh, definition or way of looking at a saint. A saint is a very patient, unselfish person. One who looks to bless or benefit other people. Some people think that uh, their personality traits make them a saint. Some people think that a suffering person is a saint. In the Catholic Church, I remember people say, oh, that person has suffered so much and he, he's a saint for sure. I remember them saying that. In the church that we came from, there's a process called canonization takes place. And it, it, is, it has evolved over the years, but there has to be evidence such as uh, martyrdom, that makes you a saint, a heroic life, or miracles performed by that person when they were living. So the church decides who's a saint, and the candidate has to be dead. <laughs> All the saints in that church are dead. You can't be a saint unless you're dead in the Catholic Church. You have to be dead to be a saint. So what it really is a saint? In the New Testament, a saint is any Christian believer. Those of you who know the Lord as your Savior are saints. Saint Clyde. <laughs> Saint Sherry. Saint Carol. Saint Woody. <laughs> if you know the Lord as your Savior, you're a saint. Your, lamb, your name is in the Lamb's Book of Heaven, and that is your destination. Beware, though, that your name can be removed from the Lamb's Book of Life. Exodus 32, 33. The Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. That takes care of the once saved, always saved argument, doesn't it? The Bible agrees with the definition that Christian believers are saints. And the Bible has a lot to say about saints. Saints are alive. And saints are known today. I know a lot of them. Saint Ruth. <laughs> Saint Carol. I know a lot of them. Saint Bob. 
shake his head no yes you, if you don't if you're not a saint you need to repent I can I can help you with that Saint Shawnee Saints are, are not just those who are declared to be so after death. You don't have to be dead to be a saint. In fact, you have to become a saint before you die. If you're not a saint before you, your life is over, it's too late. Should have had an amen. So how do we know that? Like most things, the Bible is our all-sufficient rule for faith and practice. So Paul wrote to the saints. He wasn't writing to dead people. Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, in the NIV, it's God's holy people. Sometimes they translate that as God's holy people instead of the word saint. But we only write letters to the living. As a matter of fact, nobody writes letters anymore. When's the last time you ever wrote a letter? We don't write letters anymore. But that was a way of communicating, and they communicated with, to live people. We use email, texting. We call on the phone. If you write a letter to a dead person, how will you mail it? I don't think that there are any cell phones, tablets, or computers in heaven. Don't even bother trying. We only write to live people. Paul wrote to live people, and he called them saints. Paul writes to church members who were alive at the time. He wrote to believers, to saints, to God's holy people, and they were living at the time. So these letters had to do with personal relationships. And the Bible says, and he gave some apostles, you know this scripture, some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So I'm a pastor teacher and my job is to prepare the saints for the work in the works, works of service, it says in the King James. And then money was to be distributed to the, to the poor saints, Romans 12, 13. Distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. A lot of things the Bible says about saints. Paul had, before his conversion, imprisoned the saints. Acts 26, 10, which thing I did... In, I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did. I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. We're talking about saints today. Living believers. Some translations call the saints the Lord's people or God's holy people. But it's all about living people that are living for God. Later, he was imprisoned, a saint in a prison cell. In places of persecution, many saints are imprisoned today. North Korea, Iran. But clearly, every believer is a saint. But it's not a person's manner of living that makes him or her a saint. It's not how kind and gentle you are that makes you a saint. It's not how much time you spend in church that makes you a saint. Ken spends a lot of time in church. He's here every day just about. Fixing something or straightening something up. Saint Ken. <laughs> By that definition. You can give everything you have to the poor or to missions and not be a saint. You can be as sweet as honey and not be a saint. 
So there's a transition from sinner to saint. This is Romans 6, 17. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have, be, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. That's the transition. And in verse 18, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. That's the transition. Set free from sin, slave to righteousness. And then down to verse 22, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. That is the transition from sinner to saint. And it happens while you are still alive. In John 1, 12 and 13, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. That's the born again experience. That's what we that's why we share the light of the gospel, that some might turn towards uh, towards God and become saints. Saints, you used to be in darkness, and now you were in the holy light of Jesus. Amen. You beat me to the switch. Saints, you used to do things your own way, but now you do things God's way. Amen. Saints, you used to please yourself, but now you live to please God. Amen. Acts chapter 2. 37 to 39 Peter preached a sermon after this after the Spirit of God fell in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 he went out into the streets and preached a sermon and then in verse 37 when the people heard this they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles brothers what shall we do and he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. When they were cut to the heart, that was when they turned toward God. They didn't know just how to do it, but they knew they had to. The conviction of the Holy Spirit was on them, and they knew they had to make a change. I can remember being that way for three days until I got a vision and repented in the vision. Cut to the heart. I can remember that. I didn't know what to do. Walking around with the Holy Spirit on me. And I didn't know what to do. And on the third night, I got a vision at the crucifixion. And to make a long story short, I saw the hammer coming down on the nails. And I recognized the hand. It was my hand on that hammer. My hand. I was the one that caused him pain with every sin in my life. The Holy Spirit brought conviction that 3,000 were saved on that day. That's when the church began. Saints, you have been to the throne of grace. Saints, God knows you by name. Saints, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. <clears throat> Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Saints, you have responsibilities. The Bible outlines responsibilities of the saints in Ephesians chapter 3. And uh, up chapter 5, verse 1. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Saints, we are to walk in love. 
But among you, verse 3, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people, which are God's saints. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Verse 5, for of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Saints, we are to walk in purity. Let no one deceive you, verse 6, with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them. Saints, we are to be separate. You've heard that old scripture, come out from among them. We're to be separate. We're in the world, but we're not part of the world. Verse 8, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. Verse 9, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Saints, we are to let our light shine. Verse 10, and find out what pleases the Lord. Saints, we're to keep in communion with the Lord through prayer, through scripture, and through fellowship with fellow believers. Here is the key to understanding this kind of holy living as becomes the saints, as becomes us, people of God. We are to live holy because we're saints. Saints ought to live saintly. We are to be saints in every morning and every night. We are to be saints walking, talking, driving, etc. Saints are to represent the Savior at all times. Somebody cuts you off in traffic, you shake your hand and get growly. That's not what a saint should do. Amen? The wrath of the Antichrist will be against the saints. Revelation 13, 7, it was given power to war against God's holy people, the, the saints in King James, against the saints, and conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. There will be difficult days ahead for tribulation saints. Many will be martyred during that time. Trials of most saints today are small in comparison. In Revelation 16, 4 to 6, the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard an angel um, in charge of the water say, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One, you who are and who were. In verse 6, For they have shed the blood of your holy people, that is the saints, and your prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. Saints are to overcome then and now by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, 11, They trampled over, they trampled over him by the, they triumphed, triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. The saints will return with Christ to reign. In Jude 1, 14, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones. In other words, of his saints. Walking with God enabled Enoch to see the future coming kingdom even though it was way far off for him. The saints will come riding in. Revelation 19, 11 to 16. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white throne, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. 
He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He leads the, he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty on his robe and on his thigh. He has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I think we'll be in the armies of the Lord. And the saints will rule and reign with their Savior. Revelation 26, blessed are the holy ones, the saints, who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. In every age, God has a remnant that represents him. S saints represent their Savior in this present evil world are you a saint are you are you representing your savior we are a remnant we're in a we're in a, a terrible minority in some places there aren't any or if there are they have a death sentence on them and they're hiding some places north korea iran there's persecution and there's anti-Christian sentiment rising its ugly head against us in this country. Canada, believe it. We have to represent our Savior because we are the saints. Psalm 116, 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That means we're going home. Martin Luther King said, free at last, free at last. The ancient struggle will be over. Every soldier in a war wants to go home. Just wants to go home. Most of those soldiers are young men. We'd call them boys. If I could just go home to my family, eat some mom, mom's home cooking. Every soldier wants to go home. We're in a war, saints. We're the soldiers. And we're going to get to go home. To a home we've never seen, but we anticipate. Amen? Amen. You might know this song. What a day that will be. Do you know that song? Yeah, let's sing it with me, would you? What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there will be no sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness no more pain no more parting over there but forever i will be with the one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see when I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be that's us that's the saints i was going to do that in a screen version but even though i can't sing there's nobody here but us so i just decided to do it myself if i could if i could play a banjo i have one i have four violins a couple of guitars i can't play anything <laughs> i just have them <laughs> would you stand with me 
Saints of God, stand to your feet. How's that sound? Pastor, he's seen the word for just a few minutes. Say, say that again. Okay, board meeting just for a few minutes. Okay, that's fine. All right, dear Lord, we thank you this morning that we are the saints of God. We understand we have responsibilities to carry that light. We can't just keep it to ourselves, Lord. So as we, as we go through our life and our days, Lord, impress upon us that you are there with us and that there are people who are in the dark. And impress upon us, Lord, that it's our responsibility to be and to carry the light of the Holy Gospel of our Lord. We can't keep it to ourselves. The time is short. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to be the saints that you want us to be. In Jesus' name. Go with us all. We dismiss us in your grace, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody take